In this video, we are going to be building a custom roll cage for a Polaris Razor Turbo. We're gonna be taking you through this build step by step so that you can see how things unfold, how we come up with our ideas, and how we end up with the final product of a sweet custom cage on a good budget for your Razor or any other side by side. You can apply this video to anything. That could be an X3, could be a KRX, could be whatever. Stay tuned, this is gonna be a fun one. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. Anyways, let's dig into the build and let's have some fun. What's going on, guys? Today is a very, very important and awesome day. I'm here Absolutely. with my buddy Blair. How you doing, guys? Blair Harbor Custom Welding, Cayuga, Ontario, out in Haldeman County, with my boy Julian. We're just uh, we're getting ready to put this thing under the knife. We've done uh, we did another cage about six months ago for one of our good friends at Life Outdoors, Max. Yeah, you guys have seen him in like the previous videos, like he was in the Daker video and he'll likely be riding with us coming up into the future too. And um, if you're not aware of this, this right here, this is what a Canadian redneck looks like. Yep, yeah. uh, the, if you really wanna be a redneck Canadian welder, the first thing you gotta do is denim. get a pair of denim uh, overalls. And in the summer, you're better to uh, wear a wife beater under this and it, you really uh, look the part. That's right. Yeah. We're, th we're talking about you guys down south. We're gonna give you a run yeah, for your money. Yeah, up here we're repping Tim Hortons because uh, that's what us Canucks do. And we just ate a bunch of pea meal bacon sandwiches, so yeah. we're good to go, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all ready to go. We're you got a little maple up. syrup in that coffee? Yeah, a little bit of syrup, yep. <laughs> it's snowing out. The igloos are ready to go. We're <laughs> yeah. good to go. My penguins are running around out there. I brought my penguins. Oh, did you? Yeah. Right on, right on. They get along well with the polar bears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just firing the dog sleds up and uh, <laughs> we're gonna put them away and work on the razors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get cracking. So essentially, we're gonna give the battle wagon here the much needed cage upgrade that it probably should have had a long, long time ago. And since our li little fiasco in West Virginia, where we kind of ended up rubber side up. Ah! Ah! Hello! Smile for the camera. Good. Yes. good. Oh. Oh. Holy Three, two, one. Yeah. Going over. All right, so good. Uh, this cage definitely needs to be replaced. So what better reason to do it than because you need to. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get cracking into this. We got some ideas. We're basically going to like, we've looked at a bunch of different cages, taken some concepts that we like from them, and then we're going to put our own twist on it and see what comes out. But I'm sure you guys are wondering what this stuff is. So we're going to give uh, Blair here a little bit of street cred. <laughs> He's got his own razor there. Razor Turbo 22. Yeah, yeah she's a 21. 21. Yeah. So this thing's, uh, this is gonna be uh, getting a cage too, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm a little embarrassed right now, uh, sitting here with Julian. Don't worry, I friends gotta... don't let friends keep stock for the, long. The only thing that I have stock in this shop right now is my razor, and and that's gonna change yeah, real quick. Yeah, this thing's stock though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that's bone stock, yeah. yeah. what is this, a 2024? Yeah, it's a 24 uh, Duramax High Country. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. With a uh, twin turbo Duramax in it. Yeah. No, nope, oh, this oh, is, yeah. so this is the OG street machine here. This is where it all started. This is where I learned uh, when I was 15. I bought the cab and I started with the cab. I bought it from Ancaster Swap Meet. And uh, I bought this cab for $700 and it's from uh, Nebraska. And, uh, and it evolved over the years into a twin turbo LS that uh, we piped up and she's tuned by BMS Tuning in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I like to go to Tim Hortons in. And uh, on a Saturday morning. This thing's sweet. What size are those turbos? Those are 68. 68. Yeah, they're billet turbos. And then it's got a forged uh, 408 stroker, uh, air to air intercooler, and it runs on 91 and uh, meth. What, what, um, what's it put to the wheels, roughly? So we're on 19 pounds of boost. Uh, I shouldn't really be saying this on camera for the no prep guys, but oh, whatever, I don't really care because we haven't cranked it up yet, but we made 830 at the wheels on 19 pounds, uh, 91 and meth with a mild octane booster. So we're hoping uh, in the new year, we want to we want to lay down a thousand of the wheels and uh, probably be around 22, 24 pounds of boost. 
Sweet. Well, um, we could do a whole video on this thing. Yeah. So if that's what you guys are interested in, leave a comment. We can make it happen. Uh, but for now, we're going back to we're going the back rugged. To the, to the, yeah, the razor here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip off the cage, the roof, the light bar. Um, we're gonna remove the rear cargo rack. It's not gonna have the cargo rack anymore. That's for days gone by. Um, and then what we're gonna do is basically run our two main tubes, right? The, and then yeah. uh, kind of work off that. Yeah, the most, the hardest part of building a roll cage for one of these razors and every fabricator will agree is the first main points of the cage. Cause once, that's the look that's gonna determine the whole rest of the cage. And that's the, that's the part where we're gonna spend, we could spend 20 minutes bending it or we could spend two hours bending it. Which, Fingers crossed. Yeah, it depends. But anyways, that's the most critical part of the cage and that's gonna give you your look of what, what we're trying to achieve here. And we gotta, this is actually a really special build because Julian's a monster. He's, he, this guy's like six foot ten, right? So, <laughs> the when you're building a cage, everybody's looking for a chop cage. That, yeah, good point. I love chop cages too, because I'm six foot, but I feel like I'm five foot tall beside him. <laughs> but uh, everybody wants a chop cage. Yeah, see, <laughs> everybody wants a chop cage, and we still have to make we still need the wow factor in this cage even though we're chopping it one inch because we want it practical julian does a lot of extreme riding he doesn't want to be bumping his head getting in and out or hitting bumps so we're getting a little creative we came up with some really good yeah. ideas we got a few ideas um hopefully they pan out i think it's going to come together good it's going to look pretty unique but be functional as well because at the end of the day this is a safety mod right the goal of the roll cage is it needs to work when you need it to work yeah absolutely looks have to be secondary but if we put our player cards right we can kind of get both out of it right yeah so uh, enough enough talk yeah uh, let's start stripping this thing down we'll kind of just kind of jump through it in stages and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the ride leave a comment leave us a thumbs up follow us on instagram and on facebook and check out some of the other videos stay tuned because i'm sure we'll be testing this cage sooner than later absolutely <laughs> and you know what i mean by testing <laughs> <laughs> so right here when you want to cut your cage apart and not uh use a zip cut even though the zip cut's my favorite tool this thing's uh great this is a great tool i even use it on my igloo piping too are you a plumber <laughs> no Yeah, you work that wrist, boy. Just like that. Wow, God, look at that wrist movement. Oh, that's how you do it, eh? Look, before, nice. after. As I mentioned earlier, the goal is to build a good solid cage on a budget, so you can reuse these cage prongs if you want. Just clean up real nice and they'll be just fine. We did order some new ones for this build, but we're gonna use these ones for mock-up because the new ones aren't here yet. Yeah, I like that angle. Yeah, you like that, right? Yeah, there? yeah, just, just like weld it up. It's like one of those Japanese cars with exhaust that goes way Yeah, just lay a tack on it right there. That'll be yeah, fine. Well, that'll hold. Remember guys, it's the craftsman that makes a job great. You don't need the fanciest, most expensive tools to get a job done properly. Now, if you're doing bending all the time, then getting a fancy two bender makes sense. But if you're doing one or two jobs here and there, you don't need to go spend 10 grand on a bender. You're in the bender. Where you want your floor to go? Look. What are we at? We're not even close yet, are we? Holy moly. <laughs> that thing kicks ass, eh? Oh yeah, that's yeah. Princess Auto, Canada. <laughs> well, with a little bit of redneck ingenuity. Yeah, we had to, we had to make her work. Okay, I gotta grab the, the digital uh, to kind of get a rough idea. Okay, so we didn't go too far yet. <laughs> we, got, <laughs> we got lots to go. <laughs> Man. Look, it's gonna go right out to your line. Yeah, because that's 15 inches that's from awesome. there to there. It's always, because that's the size of the die, yeah. right? So you always have a reference point to measure back when you do the other one. We're getting close. That's the biggest thing. What do you think? Oh yeah, we're close. I'm gonna take it off. Let's check it. And then what I do... Are you like, marking it again? I mark the bender where it stops. In the half? So we know where to take leave from, right? So actually that mark that I had on the bender is where we took off from. Right there. So I'm gonna just gonna put a little- you uh, mark the pipe as well? I'm gonna put an R for razor. 
cool. And then uh, we know if we have to tweak it, we can go right back to that reference point. We got it locked in here and we got it locked in there. We know where the reference point is. Biggest thing with tube bending, you always got to have a reference point. So if we were doing it for a guy that wasn't six foot four, she'd be right down there. <laughs> See, the best part is we can reference right off of that point and reference off the 15 inch point. So we have something to measure off of every single time, right? How much more can you go down? Well, uh, do you have your helmet on? No, you? but this will work as my helmet. <laughs> like that? Oh, dude. Dude, we could chop this bitch more. Yeah, but we still gotta remember that the roof is gonna be here. Yeah. We... Okay, let's keep our original plan. Yep. Yeah, I honestly, I, yeah. I, I don't care about chopping it too much. Yeah, yeah, let's just keep our original plan. I'm just gonna make another mark to make sure we're perpendicular. Like Blair said, the main tubes are the most important part of the cage because the rest of the build relies on them, so just take your time. All right, so uh, what was it, Saturday was more of a research and development type of day. Yeah. Uh, you know. Anyways, it, it turned into knowing what's going on and having a plan. So uh, I showed up and this is where we are now. And this is gonna be like the, this should be the, pretty much the general shape of this cage, just lower. I didn't, I didn't want to start with O'Julian, but I, I really wanted, it wanted to be like Christmas morning when he walked in the shop, right? Yeah, so we got some progress. And then we're gonna just, we're fitting up the, the super ATV glass windshield here because this will keep our proportions because we want to maintain the front part of the cage to work with like stock glass or windshields and stuff like that just to keep it easier. Safety and comfort first. Yeah. Yeah, definitely safety and functionality. Um, looks are going to come with that though. Um, so yeah, it, you, if you're like a midget and you're like, you know, like 5'9", like some short. Like max. You can chop that cage, right? Five and a half inches. Yeah, just make sure you leave enough room for your booster seat and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're mocked up here almost. We need to do some trimming. The front windshield's in. Now that we've got the two main bars set up the way we like them, we can move on to designing the rest of the cage. Like Blair said, these are definitely the most important bars because the rest of the cage builds off this framework. Put in the extra time to get these perfect. Changing out the small tubes in between is always easy, but once you commit to the two main bars, there's no going back. Now you notch her. Yeah, now I'm gonna put a no same notch on the other end, and then we're just gonna cut it off. If you are going to build a roll cage or do any tube work, I highly suggest investing in even a cheap notcher. Even if the notches aren't perfect, then you can always fine tune them by hand using an angle grinder. So we'll go in, what do you want, inch and a half? Yeah, you can do inch and a half. Okay, inch and a half. Inch and a half. A bandsaw is another great investment for your shop. Even if it's a small table mounted unit or a handheld portable one, it still helps ensure you get nice, clean, straight cuts every time, which reduces a lot of the headaches later on so that everything lines up really nicely and it's a lot easier cutting tube with this than anything else. After you make your cuts, spend a few seconds cleaning everything up. It will save you a lot of time and make assembly a lot easier and a lot nicer down the line. Proper fitment impacts weld quality. So what I'm thinking here is we got a notch. It's, that's all fine and dandy, but whenever you're notching into another piece, you actually got a back notch right there. So, cause that's where it's gonna end up. Right, see how it fits nice and tight like that? Yeah. Well, we got we got a piece intersecting on the bumper here. So we actually have to notch that back right, side. Right, you gotta compensate for that piece to, sticking to out. To fit yeah. around it, right? So we're just, we're gonna do an eyeball on this. What you can do is you can throw that back in the notcher, mark the center of where and run the notcher through it. Theoretically, that's, but you don't really have to. Yeah. You can just take a sander. Especially not when you're doing one or two. Yeah. Let's just make sure I get the right one. <laughs> okay, so that is the right way. I'm gonna mark that right now before I forget. Because there's nothing worse than spending 15 minutes on a piece and you just f yourself. Because you did the wrong side. Yeah. Um, okay, Blair, so we got the game plan here. Um, yeah. I guess we got our two main pipes laid out yep. and uh, we've got the windshield on there to maintain proportion and then we can work off this right this is an easy way to make sure we're kind of in line with everything this is great because it actually lines everything right up like you just said there's no guessing on what angles these go on we're still gonna look at it before we nail it in place to make sure it's dead square 
to the other side and each bar matches each other. But this is putting us right in the ballpark, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're not doing a hoop, right? No, we're, we're going RS1 style. So the main, the two main bars all the way from the front of the machine to the back bumper, right? Yeah. yeah. See, is, I'm here filming video and Blair's got to do all this work. That's okay. I'm used he to He just it. told me, make sure you make me look pretty. Yeah. I, I, I didn't put my makeup on this morning. I, I told Blair that everyone appreciates that natural look. Yeah. Since we're mating this cage with an already existing setup of bumpers and an exo cage, nothing's exactly symmetrical. It's being beaten on and tweaked, so he's fine tuning every notch one by one. Just a little bit. Uh -huh. I think we're in the ballpark now. Yeah. We need just a hair more and we're uh, ready to rock. The key to using a grinder on anything, even these roll cage tubes, is not digging into the parent metal just taking it off enough to clean it because there's nothing worse than a, you, you like grind the shit out of where you're prepping to weld and it looks like somebody just hacked the grinder in there because when you powder coat it you're gonna see those grinder marks yeah, it doesn't cover anything yeah yeah so you you want to you want to keep it clean right you don't want to be it's one of my pet peeves and i i hate it when guys like Oh, okay, we're gonna weld here. And then it just, it looks like you just hacked it off. The best way to do this is actually with a wire wheel because you're not taking any parent metal out. You're just cleaning the area. But we're, as long as, these are great, as long as you know how to use them properly and you don't like take too much yeah, off. Yeah, man, charge the battery, hold it down as hard as you can and send keep it. it there for about 45 seconds, right? Send it. Yeah, just send it. Nice. All right, and then obviously we want to figure out the right trajectory here before we even nail it into right. Okay, Daddy, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's nail it. We'll be TIG welding this whole cage using one and three quarter 095 wall DOM tubing with an ER70S carbon steel TIG wire. So we're just gonna eyeball that. Looks pretty damn close. Looks like we're going the right way here. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just talk yourself through it. You'll be okay. Broke, broke back fabricating here, boys. You hey know, man, you said it, not me. Now I know this is gonna come up, so we'll just mention it. You can get away with MIG welding a cage. If you have a good welder, if you have good welding skills, you can safely weld a roll cage using a MIG welder. However, TIG welds are considered structurally superior to MIG welds overall. TIG welding produces a more uniform and more structurally sound joint. It also offers better overall heat control, which gives you a more precise weld. Aside from that, it's a much cleaner procedure, so you don't get all the mess, the spatter, and you don't have to worry about your plastics getting damaged from all the hot pieces falling on them. If you choose to go all out and use chromoly tubing for your roll cage though, TIG welding is highly recommended in that situation. With that being said, never cut corners on material quality. Make sure you use proper DOM tubing from a reputable source when building your cage. If you're unsure regarding your fabrication or welding skills, this is not the project to practice on. I'm not exaggerating when I say this. A roll cage can literally be the difference between life and death, and it's not an area to learn on or experiment with. If you're unsure of your skills, hire a professional with a proven track record. Oh, wow, don't she fit good? <laughs> this makes it easy, eh? I don't know why you guys even pay for cages. It's easy. because that's just a good one. An R2. Yeah, where R2 was, it's the second bend on your uh, razor. Uh, <laughs> I remember, yeah. The, the first hoop, that's where we're going, just because it looks good. This old bender does the trick. We got both the crossbars mocked up. Top, bottom bar. Looks so beefy. The front view is cool because you can see that bar sticking out from the windshield. Looks super mean from here. Oh. 
And you got a post flow gas on there too, right? That's when it's, yeah, yeah. So it uh, doesn't contaminate. I just burnt my fucking beard. Yeah, and I do have a big cup on here, so. When we get to the rest of it, we'll put the right size cup on there. Look <laughs> at the old aluminum cup right now. Gives you lots of gas. So. You can see the cage is really starting to take shape now. Blair's got most of the main bars tacked in place. He's just doing some final measurements and squaring everything up. All right, so we're la this is probably our last real tricky bend. You know, tricky bend where we got to use our brain power a bit. The rest is easy. Trying to find where we're going to incorporate this off the bung. Bung. And it's got to be in a good structural location. It has to look good and it can't stick out too far. This thing's looking mean though. I think this is where we're going to have to make an educational guess. A hypothesis? The hypothesis. <laughs> I hypothesize this cage is going to be sick. Oh, well, I was thinking. <laughs> Fuckering suck attach. Fuckering suck attach. This is one of those projects that just kind of comes together in front of your eyes as you're picking away at it, looking at it, adding to it. It's kind of like art in a way. Oh yeah, that's looking like it's starting to fit up there, bud. First shot too, eh? You got that on your first I cut. Know, eh? Unreal. This guy knows what he's doing. He just eyeballed this thing and it just fell right into place. You know what you gotta do? You gotta fake it till you make it. It's gotten me by so far. It's getting... Oh, look at that. Press fit. Just a hair more, boy. Okay, I think we got her, bro. Bra. She bro. looks pretty nicely fit from this side, actually. Yeah, just don't zoom the camera in. I did, and it still doesn't look awful. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad, eh? No, the fit's great, dude. Perfect. Notches up really nice there. It in the right spot right at the freaking middle of that bend, too. That worked out great, dude. Put her here on camera. What's that? Yeah, ting. Ting. Slay. Slay the bead. Okay, now we gotta match. All right, man, pretty successful day, I'd say. We, uh, yeah. we actually achieved our goals of getting the main cage itself on there and tacked together. Um, we got a few little odds and ends, but the six main mounting locations are like locked in. The hardest part of the job. So all we got left now is we got our overhood bars, which that's gonna be pretty damn easy. Yeah, that'll be straightforward. Hardest parts were definitely these pillars here off the side, but those are both in there and looking pretty much identical. We got the rear bars in there all tacked up. Everything's tacked together. We got the lower bar, the upper bar, this upper bar. So we're left with the two coming off where the, the in bed kind of mounts here where the shock reservoirs usually mount. Those are gonna tie into the harness bar and then we're gonna send the harness bar here. And then uh, we're gonna do a few little gussets, some handles, yeah. you know, some like handles on here, a few little odds and ends and final touches. And then you just gotta go to town and stick it all together, right? That's it, the best part, welding. Yeah, so- The uh, easy part. <laughs> yeah, the hardest part is done. Yeah. So sweet, man. Oh yeah, it was a good nice. day. Yeah, we did well, day. we did well. Yeah, so I'm stoked. So I'm out of here today. Uh, we put like seven hours in, I'd say. Yeah. We, we messed around, you had some buddies come over, like, Five hours of work, maybe? Yeah. So we put all this together in about five hours. So it was a pretty yeah. successful yeah. day. Yeah, so pretty good. Okay, yeah. so we'll catch up with you uh, next round. And then by the time I show up, I'm assuming you're gonna pick away at this a bit more. Yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna come right onto it some more. Yeah. But I don't wanna do too much. No, 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 you'll, you'll get it all together and then yeah. get it all tacked up and then I'll be back probably the day after that. And, and we're we'll gonna do, it. yeah, with you around, we're gonna do the the, all the final gusses, yeah. so you got that look you exactly want. Because it's hard for me to achieve that yeah. without you here, right? So um, we've maintained the OEM proportion on the front here pretty damn good. Yeah, oh yeah. You can see the stock piece of plastic up there. It's like a glove. The, the windshield's on there, and um, we still have kind of like that factory rake. It's not a chop cage, but I think it looks good. The side profile is wicked. It's got a sick rake. Once it's all painted with the roof on it. 
it's really gonna come together. We're gonna do an aluminum roof. It's gonna be really nice. We'll catch up with you in the next video or in the next part. We're back. Day three, right? Day three. We got the sidebars in here. Blair got those in yesterday. I got it on. Now we're just uh, figuring the last finishing touches on this uh, back piece because that was a major focal point of your last cage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the back was. It better focal. be right. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, so now we're putting a gusset in here. We're gonna give it a radius too, so everything it's, radius is in. It's gonna strengthen everything, but it's also gonna look pretty fly. For a white guy, right? Yep. Are you allowed to say stuff like that now? Guy? We are in uh, Haldeman County. Should I beep that out? No. No. He's gonna finish off that gusset set up there. We're also gonna do a, a, a V here, and then we're gonna V from there out to both the pillars, the A pillars there. This thing's gonna be tough. We don't wanna go too crazy though, because we don't, we, the whole point of this revision to the racer, to the battle wagon here, is to drop the center of gravity. Yeah, we're probably adding a bit of weight with the cage, but I'd say this is justified. All right, we are making more progress. You can see we've got the passenger side gussets done in the rear here, tacked in. That's looking good. Tied in nicely. And then we've got the triangle gusset there. And now we'll duplicate that on the other side. Then we just have to connect to the rear of the bed here with a curve into the harness bar. It's really coming together. I'm really happy with how it looks. We're gonna pull the cage and the exo cage and the bumpers and everything off and get it all repainted a new color because aside from doing this cage, I'm also gonna change up the wheels and tires, drop the suspension down a little bit, and I'm going to rewrap the machine finally. We're gonna, we're really gonna blow some new life into Battle Wagon version 3.0. And I've been talking to Barrett Hepburn. Um, he watches the videos, he's got an X3, he loves to ride and he's probably like one of the best wrap designers out there right now. Um, probably the best wrap designer in Canada um, for, you know, like snowmobile, motocross, side-by-side -side type stuff. He really is pushing the bar with the, the UTVs and the side-by-sides. So uh, we're gonna team up and do a pretty badass wrap. Hope you're enjoying the video so far. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you are. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And as always, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. It helps the videos do better and the channel do better in general. Um, so if, you know what, we got a Shopify store, we got all the social, but if you're gonna do one thing, uh, all I would ask is just smash that subscribe button, guys. Aside from watching the videos, if you, if you enjoy watching them, just take the few seconds and subscribe. If you want some cool Team AJP stickers and swag, shirts, sweaters, stuff like that, head on over to our Shopify store. All the decals and the shirts are made locally and uh, they're all high quality. We got all sorts of cool stickers. I love these warning labels. They're some of my favorite. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they, uh, they seem to be very popular actually. Everyone loves the unexpected full sends. And a Team AJP classic is the what scratch. <laughs> Who cares about scratches? They just make it look better. It also comes in band-aid form. All the proceeds generated from the sticker and swag sales go directly back into creating more content for you guys to enjoy. If you're here watching this, yeah, then you probably live the UTV life. Hide your daughters, guys. Hide your daughters. We are working on the overhood bars now. We're gonna get them to follow the contour of the hood here. Kick in, kick down, into the bumper. We couldn't get as much bend as we needed because this pipe was too short. So um, Blair, being the pipeline welder he is, just extended it. You can hardly tell there's a weld there. He just welded um, an extra length of pipe on there, just an off cut, so that we could feed it through the die and get the, the bend we need out of here because we were running out of pipe and then once that's done, we'll just cut it off. So uh, this is looking awesome. I'm, I'm really happy. Proportion wise, everything looks great to me. It really looks like everything uh, is lining up well and it's flowing well with the body. The overhood bars are really gonna add a lot to it as well. 
So we'll keep picking away at it. Bit by bit we're getting there. It's really coming together nicely now. From the inside here, if you look, that really has enclosed the rear section nicely. Once we finish gusseting the front, it's really going to create a nice, like, safe feeling cockpit for the passengers here. Blair, buddy, what are you thinking? We're, uh, we're pretty much like, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. How about you? Well, our brains are smoking, but if they're not smoking, you're not thinking hard enough. <laughs> yeah, in our case, they always smoke. If it's on, it's smoking. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so we got the overhood bars done, and I think that is like, that really, really tied this thing together. Yeah. They're just, they're not even tacked yet, but we got them sitting uh, in a good location where, well, pretty much, uh, if they're not tacked and they're holding together, yep. that should be where they go. Press fit. Even on the bumpers and in the front, it unbolts. So we've gone from six main cage mount locations to 10, right? Yep. The last thing we have left is Blair's gonna bend up some bars that go from here into the harness bar. Matching this profile here. Yep, matching that profile there. Most of the tubes here, like we tried not to keep them all super straight. They've all got a little bit of a kick or a bend to them just to keep things visually appealing as well. Get the windshield on there, we'll get the roof on there. And then once that's all fitted up, we can pull it all apart again. We're gonna pull the exo cage, the bumpers, we're gonna pull the, the rest of the cage off and we're gonna get it all prepped and painted. Uh, we'll probably end up painting that red and then the last step after all that's done is we're gonna redo the wrap so we gotta peel this wrap which is gonna suck i'm super happy he, he nailed this cage so far so good he's just gonna take it all up once he uh, finishes off the last few bars and then smooth sailing from there i mean the last thing is uh, last part is my job i gotta test it right yeah oh well, we're gonna test. we gotta roll test we it see back there that's our next victim. So at this stage of the game, what Blair is saying is he's got to build a front bumper, a rear bumper, tree kickers, exo cage, and a full cage. Yeah, I got my work cut out for I me. Mean, you don't. You don't want to show up to the ride and like, no. you know, look like a pussy, well, do you? You're not a pussy, are you? Well, the problem is, I mean, this he's thing. Not, he's dodging the question. No, no, this thing's not ready for an AGP ride yet. Yeah, that, so that, we're gonna make it ready. And uh, I'm sure eventually. This thing will get tested like a cage should be tested. So stay tuned for that. Now that I've got the RS1 front diff, I've got the new tranny, I've got a bunch of other stuff done. I'm gonna drop down tire size. Um, I've got the cage now. Like, don't kid yourself. Um, it's a lot easier to send it when you know the machine is capable of taking it. So now at least I know I've got that insurance policy that if I do push it a little harder and it lays over, I don't have to worry about anything. I can do all the unexpected full sends I want now, right? Oh, yeah. Unexpected full sends are okay with a cage like this. We are pretty much done for day three. Most of the hard work is done. Blair's going to go around tomorrow. He's going to weld up the cage completely. He's going to add the crossbars in the roof still. And uh, once all that's done, then pretty much we're just ready for some final touches. I'm going to mount the roof after that. Then we'll weld in all the roof mounting tabs go over it one more time, make sure everything's okay, pull it off the machine, and then get it ready to prep for paint. In the meantime, Blair's also gonna get started on working on his roll cage. His plan is to build a similar cage, just like I mentioned, with more of a chop and a slightly different design. And he's also going to incorporate overhood bars as well as a custom-built front bumper. And then down the line, he'll also be doing some tree kickers, a rear bumper, and potentially a exo cage as well. All right, guys, we're here to check out the roll cage. Just got the Blair shop. It's all welded up and off the vehicle, ready to check out. It's ready for paint, pretty much. Uh, and I brought him some wheels and tires and some other goodies for his razor. Santa's here. Christmas is here for him. All uh, right, is this a BH custom welding? Yep, yep, yeah, I think you got the right spot here. Yeah. Yeah, what, um, uh, what the f do you want? Um, I'm looking to get a roll cage made. I want it to be kind of unique because I'm a snowflake. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, can you make me a snowflake cage? Yeah, I think... Uh, That'll we'll... protect my feelings? Uh, did you... You gotta leave your feelings at the gate at this shop. We don't give a f Oh. Oh, that's really, that was very vulgar and aggressive. I'm you. just kidding. That was very verbally aggressive. You know what? If you if you want to sit down, we could have a little chit chat with some tea if you'd like. What's going on, Blair? Not much, brother. How are you? How's that cage? Oh, it's f***ing great. You know what? It's, uh, it's Christmas time. It is. My, Speaking of which. And my favorite thing to do, yeah. out of all the welding that we do in this shop and fabricating, my favorite thing is to build roll cages for side-by-sides. And uh, this one really kicks ass, so. Sweet, so uh, 
Before we look at the cage, look what I brought you. Wow. That yeah. is friggin' cool, man. Friends don't let friends ride stock. I know, and you know what? If anybody knows anything about me, nothing I got is stock. For long. Except for my Razor Turbo right now, and, it, and it's awful. So uh, we got a set of 32 by 10 by 15 inch BF Goodridge mud terrains. Those are bigger threes. than the tires on my welding rig, look. They are. Yeah, you can't put a tire this size on a on a Chevy though, right? It'll fall apart. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> my Kubota's got bigger tires than the Ford. <laughs> <laughs> man, that is cool. That uh, is super cool. I got cool. you some harnesses too. Oh man, that is awesome. What kind of harnesses are these? It's a four point. Oh yeah? Yeah, with an automotive buckle. The, the override thing. Oh, dope. Uh, those I'm going to put in mine. Those are yours. These are the ones that won't fit through the seats. They're the retractable harnesses. Oh yeah? But yeah, what do you Shit. think of these wheels? Those are friggin' dope, man. Brand new System 3 beat blocks. Catch. Holy Sorry, they got some dirt on them. I hope oh. you're okay with that. You know what? I didn't wash it after I used it. We know it. you just... like it dirty, so I'm not expecting anything else from you. <laughs> it's actually pretty clean for me. Wow. <laughs> I got some orange paint, eh? Nice. Well, I you, gotta, up. you gotta pull those rings off and make them orange. Yeah. These are from UTV Canada, yeah. Nice. They sent them over. You got a set of mirrors, too? Oh yeah, I brought you some mirrors. Do you have mirrors? Oh. I didn't think you did. So these are just a set of Rogue mirrors. I took these off my machine. They just might need a coat of paint so where, or where's, not. where's Rogue from? Uh, it's UTV Canada website. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's their house brand. If you don't mind hand-me-downs, you can have them. Oh buddy, I love hand-me-downs. I got some spare underwear in the house too uh, I was gonna give you for Christmas. Let's like go the... in here, because I gotta show you what I okay. built you for Christmas. All right, let's see what we got here. So, oh, there's... Wait, yours is taken apart too. Well, I had a little boo boo, and I wasn't uh, too. I can't really tell you over the over the camera what I did, but you know, <laughs> happens. This Look is the before. Before. Pop can. And this is the after. Beer can. Beer can. What do you think of that? I think it looks great. This thing looks like it's going 100 miles an hour just sitting there. Yeah, the overhead bars look dope. The welds look nice too. Yeah, make sure you zoom in on we'll the We'll have to get ones. some zoom-ins on those later. It's actually not as heavy as you think. Grab a side. Watch. Oh no. I mean, it probably weighs a little more than the stock cage, but we've also added quite a bit of meat. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. I think it looks good. Laying down here, it even looks good. The gussets on the back look nice. It, it flows really good with the, with the cage here. I think we've definitely got enough height I actually, you know what? Remember we were talking about like over chopping cages? Yeah. I had a guy message me on Facebook and say, hey, make sure like you leave yourself enough height being tall. He's like, cause he got a cage built and, and his head hits the overhead bars. Yeah, that's not good. And eh? he says, he says it's not bad, but he's like, it's so annoying. You know, everybody thinks, okay, we got these Cali cages looking gangster. You hit a bump. <laughs> even with harnesses, you're moving, right? How much yeah. do you say you generally move? Even if strapped in, you're well, moving. When you're on your lid... Let's be honest, no one runs their harnesses super that tight. tight yeah. you like have, if you have a four point, you're usually running it loose for trail. If you're, if you're ripping and you're jumping, that's different. You're yeah. buckled in there. But for trail riding, you usually got a bit of play because you got to be able to look out the windows and stuff, right? Yeah, make sure you go around. So like you, you bounce up and down a bit. And I mean, if you've only got two inches of clearance, you're going to hit your head. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the old race cars, like the old Ford GT and stuff like that? They had to put bubbles in the roof so it would clear the driver's helmet because yeah. the cars were so <laughs> low pro. Yeah. Yeah, that's not how you want to set this thing up. It looks no. so funny, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like one of those Jeeps from the 50s. A Willys, yeah. And, and you see the guys in the videos and they're all bouncing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like this, eh? No cages. Yeah, when you roll the thing, you just make sure you jump out before it hits. Yeah. What do you think of that? Nice. If you covered this section here, totally it, it would look probably a look better. a lot yeah. nicer, eh? You welded the bolts on the other side, eh? Yeah. Yeah, nice. So this is a prototype. We're, we're uh, I've got actually a lot of guys interested in these because bumpers are something that, yeah, definitely a lot of people are going to want. Looks pretty strong. Yeah. Now the next step is a crappy one for me. Uh, I'm going to pull off the front bumper, the rear bumper, the whole exo cage and the tree kickers, all that's coming off. And um, I'm going to get that prepped and ready to repaint because we're going to get some fresh paint on there with the cage. 
since the cage is going to be fresh, it makes sense to do all this now. And I figured there's not going to be a better opportunity than, than now to rewrap the razor. This wraps showing some signs of wear uh, and it's just you know it's been on there for so long it's time to it's time to switch it up a little bit and freshen things up my goal is to keep it with a similar feel as the battle wagon has kind of grown into i don't want to take away from what it is so we're just going to freshen it up battle wagon version 3.0 the, the goal is going to be just to to give it a facelift uh, but kind of stay true to the roots we're going to stick with a camouflage type design. We're just gonna mix it up a little bit. Stay tuned, this thing's really gonna be transforming. I'm really pumped. Uh, I've got a lot of plans. Hopefully we'll do some collabs and some riding with a few other YouTubers. I know a lot of you guys watch. Uh, and if there's someone you think we should collab with, then make sure you leave a comment below. Comment on our videos, comment on their videos. Because if we do a, a ride with one of these other creators, it'd be also cool to get, to get some viewers and fans out who watch uh, my content as well as whoever we're collaborating with. That'd be a ton of fun. Now we're on to one of the less glamorous and more tedious parts of the job, pulling the exo cage, the tree kickers, the front and rear bumpers off. It's a real pain in the ass getting all this stuff off there, but we wanna paint it, we wanna make it look fresh with the cage. I'm also taking the opportunity to trim some of the front fascia. I'm gonna cut some of the, the, the grill off here and you're gonna see in a second how much more aggressive it makes the machine look with that removed before and after. Damn, that looks good. I've been wanting to do that for a long time and this provided me with the opportunity to finally pull it off. Here we have it. The razor has not been this naked in a long, long time. Next step, paint prep, then paint and reassembly. Blair's got about 90% of the cage all tigged up now. The crossbars and the roof are in and now he's just adding one or two final touches. I wanted an extra bar added up into the roof there so I had somewhere nice to mount a dome light and if I want to run an accessory bag mounted off the roof it gives me a few more options on where to mount things. Blair's done a really nice job fabricating and building this cage. All the welds look great and um, the cage has really come together well. I was away for a few days and in the meantime Blair built his cage too so as you can see it's all tacked up here and ready for um, kind of final adjustment before he welds it all back together. He's got his windshield fitted there, the overhead bars and the bumper, and it's looking really mean. The cage design is a little bit different than mine. Uh, it's chopped quite a bit more. And uh, overall, I mean, it, it feels similar, but it's still quite different. So um, it's just a good way for Blair to show off what he's capable of. He's a really talented guy. So if you're looking for a cage in the greater Toronto or, or greater Hamilton area here in Ontario, Canada, check him out on Instagram, send him a message, tell him I sent you, he'll get you looked after. I mean, for a redneck, that those welds are good enough for a redneck, eh? You're all, like, what, like, what do you do? Like, you, you, you weld pipeline. I mean, I, you're, you're just like, I'm just a red you don't know how to weld. I'm just a red seal welder. Yeah. You've probably picked up from the previous conversation that Blair is a Red Seal Pipeline welder. That's what he's been doing full time for many years. He's worked on a lot of big projects all across Canada welding. He's got multiple tickets and a lot of experience. His passion has always been motorsports and power sports though. He builds a lot of custom exhaust systems for Harleys. He does a lot of intercooler piping for, for turbo builds. And he really wants to start taking on more of these projects uh, so that he can focus on the stuff he's really passionate about. Sheldon Cooper of welding right here. So the coefficient of linear expansion of aluminum is twice that of steel. She is done. She's done, eh? She's done. You just buttoned her up? Yeah, I got her. Well, she's done and ready to go on for a test fit for the windshield and then we'll pull her back off, get her all prepped for paint, eh? And then it's really gonna take life once it's all painted and shiny. And then we'll, we gotta get the roof fitted actually too. We yeah. should probably do that while we test fit. That's what we're gonna do right now. Cool. All right, got the roof fitted up, pretty much trimmed. It's just clamped on there right now. It's about 90%. We gotta weld some tabs to the roll cage underneath so that we can bolt it down. And the roof is gonna be covered in, in the vinyl wrap as well. So I don't need to paint it or anything. I just gotta clean up a few of the edges, make sure everything's straight and in line, measure it up one more time, and then we will get ready to mount it. Then I gotta pull it all off again clean up all the tubing, clean up the roof and everything, prep it for paint, and then I gotta prime and paint it. And it's gonna look awesome. Then we gotta reassemble all the bumpers, the exo cage, the cage, all that jazz, get everything back in there. And this thing will be legit, the battle wagon. Like now it is really a battle wagon. We got Blair's machine here, it's 21 turbo, sitting on my old 32 inch BFG KM3 mud trains on a system three beadlock wheel. Blair's cage is looking great too. 
He's got the front bumper. He's going to make a rear. Slowly he's going to pick away at it and do everything, including an exo cage, he said. So big shout out to Blair at BH Hot Rods for helping me um, get my cage built, get all the bends in there, helping me with the roof, and uh, helping me out with all the things I'm not like super experienced with. And I think in general, both of these cages have turned out really, really awesome. I went really basic with the roof. I just picked up a panel of aluminum, trimmed it to fit, and mounted it up there with a few simple bends. Got a little bit of a flare up on the back of the roof there, a little bit of a spoiler, makes it look aggressive. Pretty happy with how that turned out. This cage really has turned out like I've been envisioning it in my mind. Very close to what I had pictured in my head. It's always nice when you have a concept in your mind about how a project should end up and it ends up looking pretty similar to what you thought. Uh, it's a satisfying feeling. It's a lot of work and, and time and effort going into a build like this, but the end results are gonna be badass. Trimmed a lot of plastic off of the front grille, the fascia here, to give it a more aggressive look. I think it looks really cool how you can see the shocks and it shows off more of the A-arm. And the bumper will cover all the main spots that I have to worry about. You can see right here though, that rad line, that's the only thing I'm worried about. I might have to make a little bit of a shield for that or we'll see how the bumper covers it. I just wouldn't want to damage that, but I'd say the trade-off is worth it. It looks so much more aggressive. Just little things, like that doesn't cost you any money. It just costs you some time and gives it a bit more of a custom aggressive look. I hope you guys are enjoying the cage build video. A lot of work goes into maintaining vehicles like this if you want to use and abuse them. Hopefully this video can give you guys some ideas if you want to build your own cage or if you're looking to get a cage built. If you want more info on getting your own custom cage built by Blair, then check out the adrenalinejunkieprod.com website and there'll be a bit more contact information on there for you. So we'll need to weld some tabs to the roof bars here, probably in all four corners and then maybe two in the middle somewhere just to s attach that roof nice and solid and make sure it doesn't vibrate. I'll probably also run some sort of a bit of a weather stripping, a foam weather stripping underneath the roof and all the bars just to also isolate and um, hopefully prevent any sort of annoying rattles and um, vibrations. Once the roof was fitted, I wanted to do a rough fit on the windshield to make sure everything lines up okay. It proved to be a bit of a pain in the ass, but over the next little while, I'll fine tune this and we'll get it to fit really nice. This finish work often takes a lot more time and effort than you expect. If you're taking on a project like this and you have some sort of a deadline to meet, then make sure you do budget a little bit more time than you think you need. Now that we know everything fits like it's supposed to, we can pull the cage off one final time and get it ready to prep for paint. Ooh, this is a big moment, eh? We're, ta we're tacking on the roof tabs. Yeah. All right, the cage is pretty much done. It's gonna get ready for cleaning up now. I'm gonna wipe it down and scuff it so that it's ready for primer and paint. We got all the tabs welded in or tacked in right now for the roof plate. And um, yeah, she's good to go. So this is one of the worst parts of the job, but everyone knows prep work is the most important part of paint work. So I'm gonna clean this really good, scuff it up really good, and then it's ready for some self etching primer and a single sage gloss red. I know a lot of you guys are gonna say that powder coat is the only way to go. Personally, I'm not a big fan, especially with the cost of powder coating right now. Both Blair and I are huge fans of single sage urethanes. So before you scuff it and rub all this contamination into it, it's a good idea to just pre-clean it. Just spray it down even with some brake clean, rub it down with acetone or some sort of mineral spirits or whatever, just to get like some of that oil and like sh and, and all the like fabrication contaminants and crap off it from the manufacturing process of the pipe and storage, all that junk. So we got our trusty CRC brake clean. This will do a good job cleaning the first layer of this crud off here. It's good to get into all the hard to reach places too with this stuff. So also a good idea to start at the top and work your way down so the dirt washes off. You can see all that oil and crud just washing off there. Take your time on this stage. Do a really good job. You put all this work into the cage. The paint is only gonna stick as well as the surface is prepared. The paint will not stick to oil or, or debris. This is one of those stages where OCD helps. You'll need about two cans of this stuff to do the whole cage. So we'll just finish it all up and then we'll move on to scuffing. I find anytime you use like an aerosol based solvent, kind of like a brake clean, 
it does a good job washing the majority of the contamination off but you'll see there's areas here of like a where it's kind of pooled and you have a lot of contamination so i like to give it a quick wipe down now with another cleaner and a rag to get rid of all those problem areas before i start scuffing using kind of like a 400 300 400 grit um, scotch pad so I'll just go around and give it a quick wipe down get those problem areas <laughs> You don't have to be too precise at this stage, just worrying about getting the worst stuff off there. There's a lot on there still, even after brake cleaning it. So you really do gotta rub it. So just go around and do the whole cage. Now that the bumpers are off, Blair can go around and finish the last few welds. He's welding on the bungs that will hold the overhood bars and the rear bars onto the bumpers now. All right, this is probably like the worst part now. I'm sanding down the old bumpers rock sliders. We got Blair's front bumper there. My front bumper. Got to sand all that down. So sanding down these bumpers and the rock sliders and all that crap. It's definitely one of the worst parts. Uh, it's old powder coat. It's chipping and it's not going to be a perfect finish. I'm not going for a perfect finish here. There's going to be grinder marks. There's going to be scars from, from previous battles showing through the new paint. It's a refresh. It's not like supposed to be show quality. This is uh, not a trailer queen, as you guys know. The cage is done. It's scuffed up, ready for primer and paint. The bumpers are also scuffed up and ready for primer and paint, as is the exo cage. Cage is looking badass. It's gonna look awesome. The roof is pretty much ready over there too. Blair's cage is about halfway done welding. And then it's gonna get prepped for paint as well. This one's chopped a lot more than mine. He's a few inches shorter than me. Once he's done welding his up, we're gonna prep that one for paint as well. And here's just a final few looks at the cage before we get it ready to primer and then slap some paint on it. So take a look at those welds, take a look at the finished quality, and then you'll see how awesome it looks done. Because today is a big day, right? Oh yeah. If you really wanna, if you wanna come visit us, you'd be uh, getting a free buzz. <laughs> yeah, we're doing some painting. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna paint the cages today. So we got mine on the left, we got Blair's on the right with his front bumper, and then we got all my bumpers and exo cage and, and all the uh, rock kickers or tree kickers up there. What's up, Dallas? We've got the single stage urethane and orange for Blair's machine and red for mine, so today's gonna be an awesome day. It's all gonna come together. Okay, here we are. The cages are hung up, wiped down, ready for paint. So we got mine on the left, Blair's on the right. We're gonna do a self-etching gray primer to start. Do a few coats of that, get some nice coverage. And then we'll go a single stage urethane over top. Gloss red for this one and a gloss orange for Blair's. I think it should turn out quite good. It's gonna look nice. Yeah, they're gonna look great. So this is just a little bit of a before. You can see his overhood bars connect differently than mine. Just to touch on the paint selection again, using a single stage urethane is a lot easier. Um, it's, it's easy to work with. It covers imperfections really well. There's a ton of really good color choices. You can color match them. Overall, it's much cheaper than powder coating, especially when you're powder coating something this big. It needs a really, really big oven. Usually you can't powder coat on your own. You can pull this off. You can paint inside the shop. We've set up like this little ghetto paint booth with an exhaust fan. You can even paint outside if you really want to, if the conditions are pretty good. In addition, touching things up using this urethane is a lot easier than trying to touch up flaking powder coat. And urethane is basically like a liquid plastic, so it gives you a really, really strong and durable finish. I put together a cool little time lapse here to show you guys the paint process. So we're just laying on the self etching primer. It's good to use a self etching primer, especially on raw exposed metal. Um, I know there's mixed opinions on, on spraying etching primer over a painted surface. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day, especially not for the finished quality we're looking to achieve in a project like this. Like I said, these aren't show cars, they're not trailer queens. It's gonna look damn good. The truth is, no matter what you paint these with, it's gonna scrape, it's gonna flake, it's gonna get damaged if you use it like an off-road vehicle. If you are gonna paint on your own, then at minimum, make sure you get yourself a decent respirator. You don't wanna be breathing this stuff in all day. It's not good for you. Look at that red though, it goes on real nice. Personally, I enjoy painting and it's a really rewarding part of a project like this because it really pulls things together and makes them look awesome. 
I, I thought the, the self-etching primer was actually gray, but it turned out to be more of an olive drab color. And um, it, it covered and, and, and coated really well, so the finish quality was really nice. If you haven't painted before with, with a gun, you can get yourself a cheap $30 Harbor Freight or Princess Auto gun. It's good enough for a job like this. Spend a few minutes getting it set up, watch a few YouTube videos, make sure the flow is good, and then thin coats, guys. Multiple thin coats is better than one thick coat, trust me. One of the biggest mistakes most people make, especially rookies when they're painting, is trying to layer on the paint too thick and not letting it flash in between. So read the instructions that come with the paint and they'll explain everything to you. This isn't rocket science, just take your time and you can achieve some pretty good results. If you don't believe me, then just look at this. The results speak for themselves. And the cool thing about this paint is it actually ends up looking a lot better the next day. The gloss comes out of it as the paint off gases and, and cures, the results get even better. Now, keep in mind, certain colors cover better than others. I'm painting with red here. Red pigments cover really, really well. Uh, you guys will see the orange pigment I'm using for Blair's Cage is a nightmare. Painting orange is probably one of the worst colors. Oranges, yellows, they don't cover well. I literally had to put on probably twice the coats to get the same coverage using the orange paint for Blair's Cage. So keep that in mind too. Find a reputable paint supplier, ask a few friends that are in the industry, and then go buy your paint from them. They can guide you, they can tell you what paint you should get, they can give you tips on what to do, what not to do. When you go to a, a specialized store like that, then you're getting that level of service that you can't often get in a box store. These are guys that live and breathe this stuff, they understand the chemicals, and they can guide you along the way and set you up for success rather than failure. Look at that finish quality. To the untrained eye or, or from a distance, most people won't even be able to tell you whether this is urethane or powder coat. So the end result, I mean, it's excellent. You know, our paint setup is far from perfect. And yeah, I'm spraying a different color right next to my red cage. Is there gonna be overspray? Of course, there's no way to avoid overspraying in a situation like this. I just don't really care. It's not gonna be very visible. And in this application, it really makes no difference. The last huge factor to remember too is the temperature in the place you're spraying as well as the humidity levels. I'm spraying in a cool shop here, so I need to give more time in between coats to flash so that I don't get runs. If it's hot or humid where you are, that will also affect dry times and cure times. So you need to kind of keep that in mind while you're painting. All right, we are pretty much done, I think. The painting stage is done. Turned out wicked. Blair? <laughs> she looks like powder coat. Yeah, it oh, looks yeah, awesome. Money. <laughs> this is coated. Yeah, it looks awesome, eh? Coated with real shit. <laughs> Black, nothing like urethane. Yeah, so this is a single stage urethane paint. Uh, it's a gloss red, fire red. And then this is a, also a urethane single stage gloss orange. And they look wicked in person. Look at this bumper. The orange covered freaking terrible. <laughs> um, the red covered amazing. Blair's cage turned out better because I did it last. So <laughs> I messed everything up on mine and then perfected it on his. And then I've got this disgusting orange overspray everywhere from that dirty orange cage. Yeah, but it's the foos fade. The foos so, fade? fade? The foos fade? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Foos fade. Going old bro. school. Oh, yeah. That's how it, I bet the kids of today don't even know who foos is. Yeah, well, they better do the research because that's the foos fade. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you did a kick ass job spraying these. Thanks, man. Awesome. Turned out well. I'm really happy with how the, the bumpers turned out. The red looks really vibrant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I am wired right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm wired on paint. I wonder what my face looks like right now. Probably <laughs> pretty, pretty good, eh? Hey, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wicked time. Man, we done well, eh? Boy, yeah, that was a day. Yeah, we done well. Overall, uh, we done really well with this cage, these cage builds. Yeah, they turned out great. All right, I think that's, I think it's time to call our quits. What do you say, what time is it? It's so midnight? Damn close. Damn close to midnight? Yeah. yeah. 20 to 12. Time to call her quits. Yeah. That's glossy. Glossy. Right, no, I, you color. know what? I gotta say, the, the primer and the paint covered really well, eh? Yeah. 
They, they really did cover nice. Oh man, the gloss looks wicked on a video. Now we gotta put these bitches together. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at this. Damn, girl. Paint is dry, and the cage and the bumper are mounted. And you can see the fang lights. Yeah, actually you can see them really well. It looks cool. That was the objective. Mission accomplished. Look at that. I guess next step is roof, right? Yes, sir. And then now it looks like there's something missing. It's a little front heavy. Yeah. I gotta do the back bumper now. You screwed yourself when you did the front bumper and the overhead bar. I did it on purpose, now, you gotta, so finish now it. I gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get it back together though, because my little guy wants to go for a ride, so. Gotta keep him happy. Gotta keep the little guy happy. Look at this thing, it's still a little behind. But the cage is dry, and we're gonna put it we're on. Like 10 minutes behind, we're gonna have your cage on. Oh minutes. yeah, overall, I, they both turned out well. Yours definitely turned out better because I painted my bumpers and my cage and my exo cage first. Yeah. And then I, I had to fine tune the gun and get the paint figured out. By the time I was onto your cage, whew, that's, she was dialed that's in. That's kind of like me when I built your cage. I was dialed back in. And yeah. then by the time I built mine, I was like, this is easy. Yeah, so, uh, so Blair, Thanks, Blair played me, but it worked out. <laughs> Thanks, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you're, the paint on this cage turned out like a solid eight out of 10. This is a nice, nice one. Look at that finish, eh? Yeah, Single stage urethane. Nice job on that, buddy. Oh, you got a little bit of my, uh, my hair did that. Oh, no. oh, do I have a brush mark? You got, you got a brush, brush mark. mark. From my flow, yeah. <clears throat> Overhood bars turned out great. Yeah, it's nice when they fit. All right, now we'll, um, now we'll mount mine. Oh, this is a lot heavier than yours. <laughs> oh yeah, this is easier. I gotta get that. Reservoir. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's in. She lies right up. Fell right into place. That's a nice fit, eh? Oh, it looks sweet, eh? That was a good choice, that, that red. Yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad with the, um, the other red. Too yeah, bad. that was a, that's a nice red for this. Oh, yeah. For reals, for reals? Look at that. It looks sweet on there. Those overhood bars are wicked. Yeah, it looks good. We still pump for a what a sweet moment watching this all come together. Now watch the rest of the parts come on it and watch it evolve. The fit was so awesome, like you guys saw in the clip there. It just fell right into place. And here we have it, pretty much the finished product. Next step is getting that custom wrap on and that's gonna take it to the next level. Look at that. Damn. Well guys, that pretty much concludes this roll cage build video. It took us about seven days of work to get this all done. Not seven full days, but you kind of saw in the videos how we were picking away at it. If you enjoy this type of content, then leave me a comment. Let me know if you want to see more shop-related content. I really do enjoy making videos like this, so if you guys are interested in them, just let me know what else you want to see. Make sure you tune into the next video, where we're going to be peeling this old wrap off and installing a new custom wrap to really take this machine to the next level and finish off Battle Wagon version 3.0. If you'd like to help support the channel, the best way to do so is through our Shopify store. We also have a Patreon account. I don't really push it too much, but if that's the way you'd like to help kick back, then that's appreciated too. I'll also be launching our next series of ride videos that we shot in Tennessee, and we'll be putting Battle Wagon version 3.0 to the test there, including testing out the roll cage. The only way a roll cage should be tested, so stay tuned for that, there's a ton of wicked riding content coming your way. If you like the cage and you like Blair's work, and you're in our local area, then like I mentioned before, you can find more information by following Blair on Instagram, or going to the AdrenalineJunkieProd.com website, Make sure to follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And as always, ride safe out there, and we'll see you in the next video.